Hello, my friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I recently received something in PR that really, really interested me, and it's from Makeup Forever, and it's called the HD Skin All-in-One Face Palette. And I just thought, you know, I'm a sucker for anything multitasking or really compact, really practical. And I've been playing with this the last few days, so I thought, let's do this now on camera and discuss the different elements of this palette and how it all works together and if it's worth the price. The price on this 12 pan cream palette is $85, okay? And this is in the Harmony 1 shade for light to medium skin tones, and then they have a tan to deep skin tone option as well. And you know what I first thought of when I was using this palette is this is kind of like what a lot of people who use the Saint line of makeup, which, you know, you, you contact an individual who is selling that stuff, and you can create a customized palette of cream products, and this is what that kind of reminds me of a little bit in a sense. Um, I used that brand back when it was mascara. That was when individuals weren't selling it, but it was just being sold online. And I had like a little palette that held four or five different um, rectangular pans of cream product. And you know, it was some pretty good stuff. I remember going through things, hitting pan on stuff really fast. I'm not sure if textures are exactly the same as they always were. So it's been a very long time since I've used that stuff. So I'm not trying to make any kind of direct comparison there, but it just made me think about the way, you know, some people are working with all cream products a lot these days. So the stuff in here, I see these as my corrector shades. These would be like concealers. See how light the tone is there? These two, or this one even, could be foundation type shades. We've got contour, blush, and then this is a highlight with some shimmer in it. And I feel like not every texture in this palette is exactly the same. For example, when I go into this foundation shade, and I'm gonna start like swiping that on here. I'm just can swipe it around and then blend it in with a brush. But I can feel like maybe a little more thinness in that, whereas when I go to the corrector shade in a little bit, there's more stiffness, and I also think a little more coverage with it. So I appreciate seeing that difference because some products call for a stiffer texture so that they will, you know, have more coverage, and some, you know, you're going to be applying all over the skin, and maybe they don't need to be as thick. And I've looked on the Makeup Forever website, and they will point out on there what these creams are to be used for, but I haven't seen like a real step-by-step -step tutorial. Maybe they don't want to overcomplicate it and they just want to make it as easy as it seems to be, you know? But okay, I've just pretty much stuck with that one shade as my foundation color right now. Oh, and this does lay completely flat on your desk or table or whatever, but I like the thought that my foundation shade can be easily adjusted by going a little bit deeper. There's like two shades deeper that I can possibly use. This is just my e.l.f. double-ended complexion brush here. And I'm just buffing this around into the skin and it looks so natural, like super natural finish. Really, really skin-like. You know how the surface of clean skin does have a certain amount of just natural, I don't know if sheen's the word I wanna use, but um, just a little glow. I feel like I see that here. Um, I've definitely given myself some added coverage. I would say I'm at a medium coverage with this, but it looks super natural. I've used some cream products that just end up looking really thick on the skin, and this, you could just tell as you're kind of patching it around with your fingers, you can tell this is not going to be an unnatural looking cream product. And next, what I wanna do is go to my corrector shade, and I'm definitely into this peachy corrector. Again, the texture, is a little bit thicker there. And I'm going to dab this around and I'm really doing these products one at a time. I know if I were really trying to hurry through this process, I could slap on, you know, some foundation here or there, some corrector right here, and at the same time, maybe spot on some concealer. But I really want you to see what the corrector does on its own. Then we go on with a little skin tone concealer, you know? Okay, so I've dabbed that corrector shade, the peachy one, around. And the yellow, I played with that a little bit yesterday. That can be good for, you know, some added brightness too. You can also mix the yellow and the peach to sort of change the amount of peachiness. But now I'm just using the smaller end of my e.l.f. duo brush. And this has a really good amount of peachy pigment and I can definitely see it making an impact on darkness in my innermost corner and just right in here too. It's really working with those dark and even just kind of shadowy areas, you know? And then you're really gonna see an impact when I go on top with just a little bit of skin tone 
concealer. I think this product, when we're thinking about like, who is this for? Who benefits most from a product like this? Not everyone's interested in the cream makeup approach. Some people just wanna throw on a tinted moisturizer or some people know they love their full coverage foundation. Maybe you have a variety of these products and different powder steps like your blushes and bronzers and it's just not for you. But I do see a real convenience factor with this because I'm going through every complexion step here and I've just got it right at my fingertips, literally my fingertips. Okay, so after I've done that corrector, I'm now gonna to go to the concealer shade, which is a little less stiff in texture compared to that corrector. And you can see this color right here just under the yellow. It's going to end up being nice and brightening, all right? And it's just going to layer up on top of what that corrector has done. And, you know, I, I love that duo so much. I'm going down the nose with a little bit of that, hitting the chin around here. Awesome. And I can't get over how easy these are to blend, okay? no stiffness. I mean, the stiffest thing is probably the texture of that corrector, and it, I still blended it with ease. And I respect the fact that it needed to be a little thicker to like really do its job. But look at that now with this layered up on top. So easy. This is a great brush to use with this compact because you can really benefit from both sides and you know you blend something out with the small end and then you can go over it with the larger end. But the surface of my skin right now, the coverage seems really good, but yet I can see that natural finish. I don't look thick and heavy at all. The next thing I am gonna do though is I'm gonna set my under eye. I'm gonna pause on this palette and I'm going to pull in my e.l.f little powder puff and my Halo Glow powder in the light pink shade. And I am gonna set what I've done here. And then we'll just continue on with the rest of the cream steps, you know, the contour blush highlight. But you guys know, like I address it in almost every video I do, staying power is important to me. And I think any effort I can take around the under eye and T-zone to keep that looking really fresh, you know, this, this definitely helps. It's not gonna take my whole face and make it look like a thick mask of makeup. I'm just hitting those zones where I know I will benefit from this. I love this light pink powder can't even say. And the little puff, I'm using it all the time. Both from e.l.f. That's it. That's all I'm doing there. You can take a little brush to it and say, is there any excess? I can dust it away or I can help press it in, whatever. Look what's back in action, my friends. It's my swirl mug. Fall, 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 fall. Now again, if I wanna continue on with blush and contour, I could keep using this brush, okay? Because this is a pretty darn good size and shape of blender for any kind of cheek product. But I also love using this. This is my Sephora 56. I just love that for the cream contour steps. So I'm gonna go into um, this top shade here of contour. And I'm just gonna dab this around. I'm gonna do my little dots. This blends in so easily. This is a phenomenal texture of cream contour. It's right up there with um, the M Cosmetics. You know, like it's easy to blend, easy, easy. And I'm just gonna work that up into my hairline, okay? Circular motions, like you do not need to be scared about this. The texture of this falls, I think, somewhere in between the thickness of the foundation and the corrector. There's a slight bit more thickness in this, but it's still like blending is effortless. Effortless. You just buff over in a little circular motion. So easy. And that's the thing about creams. You know, you swipe them on, you see exactly where you're putting it. The guesswork of, you know, how much is coming off on my brush and this and that really isn't a factor. I do have um, two of these brushes and I always reserve this one for my blushes. But again, you could really multitask with just one or two different kinds of brushes. This could do concealer as well, the foundation step. I mean, a Sephora 56 could do pretty much everything. The e.l.f. Complexion Duo brush is another gem. So now we're gonna go to our blushes here and we've got our little bit um, like peachier one here up top. And then this other one seems to be a slightly less like glossy finish and it's more of like a pure pink. So traditional pink, a little bit cooler and then a little bit warmer peach. I'm gonna work with that bottom pink one first because it seems to be just a little more like full on with the color and then the other one adds like a little bit more dewiness. Just a little though, by the time you get it blended in, it's not like it's done anything super intense in terms of changing the feel of your skin, but 
Look, I'm just going to dab over it. Blends with ease, but this shade's just a little stiffer. And I'm quick to call out products that I think are hard to blend. I wouldn't call anything in this palette hard to blend. Everything blends easily. There's that pink, that very classic pink. Now let's layer on just a little bit of this. And this feels slightly thinner and it looks more peachy. We'll just take some of this like right up in here. That's the kind of shade that could easily translate to being a lip color, I think. Actually, really both could. Dabbing and pressing over it. You'll notice I'm not trying to really change the location of where I dab that stuff on. I'm just pressing it in where I put it. Super fresh and easy. And then we have our highlighter shade that does have some glow. No major texture difference. I would say it feels about like the first blush that I used. And I'm just going to dab this right up in that zone and then I'll go over it with my brush right up here. So pretty. I may also dab some right here. It's like the skin already has a semi glowing look, but this just totally adds without being over the top. Look at this. I mean, I would have expected after using all these cream steps, knowing the fact like I touched my cheeks here, I did not set anywhere around here with any powder. I would have expected more of a tackiness, just more of a wet feel to the skin almost, but I don't feel that. I don't even really feel that right up in here where I've layered on two different blushes plus a highlight. Like it still feels like something I'd be comfortable wearing all day long and not being concerned about, you know, how well is it gonna last or am I gonna like put my hand against it and then have makeup coming off. And it really does wear well. It doesn't look like like heavy makeup at all. And the compact is just so solid, so well made. This is obviously just painted on there on the outside, but I like that you can see the different shades. And then, you know, if this were powder, we'd have a real problem with two sides butting up against each other. Here, the shades aren't literally touching when they come together, but we're not worried about any kind of transfer because these are creams. They're not generating little particles of powder fallout, so they can definitely live like that together, okay? But I think it's just about perfect for the variety of shades. You know, you decide you want to go a little deeper with contour. You've got that. You want to adjust your foundation shade just a little bit. I'm well within the range that this palette is like reaching for, or I think you could be lighter than me and some of these colors could become foundations as well. Um, I love this peachy corrector. The blushes are great. Love that we have a cream highlighter as well. Nice solid closure. There's a lot of ease with this. And all I'm going to add into my look now will be uh, brows. I'm going to do a really simple eye, my lip color, and that'll be that. So I'm going to finish up and I'll be right back to wrap things up. Okay guys, so I've wrapped up the look. I went ahead and let's see, I did brows. I kept everything out here so I'd remember what I used. The Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil, nice ash, and my NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. And then I know I said I was going to do like just some little light look and I mean it's not a major look, but I pulled out my ABH Nouveau palette and let's see what did I reach for both of these kind of rosy shades got going in the crease I used some of this on the outer lid up into the crease some of this kind of helped blend it out and highlight and that's really it oh and some of this shade called Lily or Lily that's on the innermost part of the lid you know how that happens you just get out a palette you keep adding and adding and it's just not a natural look anymore and then I used my essence lash princess liner across the top my covergirl exhibitionist stretch and strengthen as well. And my lip combo today, I first put on my Milani. This is their um, matte lipstick in the shade Secret. So that's a really nice shade that I think has often been compared to Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. But then I added just a little richness to that on the outsides um, with my Revlon lip liner in the shade Raisin. And then on top of all that, this is a great topper gloss. Um, this Wet n Wild Mega Slicks in the shade called Call Me Boss. Um, it's got like a little bit of shimmer and it's just super glowy and pretty. So yeah, that is the look. So main story here again is this Makeup Forever palette and it's a full face cream palette. It's got everything you need for every face step from foundation to corrector, concealer, contour, blush, highlight. The only thing face wise that I found myself bringing in outside of this palette was just a little setting powder, which I used after the concealer step on the under eye area and T-zone. But I feel like finished look is so fresh. 
radiant medium coverage okay I would say you could probably build more product onto the skin and maybe enhance your coverage a little bit if you wanted to keep going build up that foundation step build up your concealers a bit more I'm sure you could but I really think part of the magic in this palette is how natural you come away looking but you don't feel like I don't feel sticky or tacky at all on the surface of my skin so I'm really pleased with how this wears how it applies just the overall finished look is really great considering what I have paid for certain Charlotte Tilbury palettes like the instant look in a palette 75 bucks about for one of those and here we're talking like every step of complexion and it's 85 and I think for the quality um, for the blendability the ease of use here the sensible mix of shades and then knowing there's a whole other deeper option also I really enjoy this now I know it's on Makeup Forever's website and you can read up on it more I'll link to that I don't think this is on Sephora yet as of the time I'm shooting this video but you know cream products are hot right now we're seeing so many cream bronzers cream blushes and all that and I just think this is a very very high quality and really practical execution of that whole idea so I'm into it I'm definitely gonna keep using this on and off looking at what else I pulled into the look maybe an eye palette a powder a couple things for the eyes and lips it's a very minimal product makeup routine when you think of it that way like very very few additional pieces have to be drawn in. So let me know if you have any questions about this product in the comments section. Again, I will link to um, where you can find more info on Makeup Forever's website. And yeah, if you've had any experience with this or any other kind of full face cream approach to makeup, let's talk about that in the comments section. Thank you guys for your time and I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye.